everybody, this is Praxis, and today it is warming up just a little bit. We had a cold snap, you know, with the Arctic air currents all in flux right now. We just got a blast of cold air, snow on Halloween, and today, you know, it's going back to somewhat reasonable, well, normal temperatures for this time of year, and we're gonna get a little bit better, but I don't wanna miss the opportunity because I realized when the ground froze up that I, I still have to put these grounding rods in. Uh, if you recall, the electrician that hooked this up and then told me that I, or they had accused me of stealing some of their conduit and then uh, hooked up the uh, uh, panel illegally close to the water line, the person that I never called back again, uh, they also never grounded out the system. So I've got to uh, do the grounding now. Uh, we had talked with the electrical inspector about different options. They prefer the preferred method right now, and it would actually be pretty cool because it's uh, something that's already there, is to take a, uh, a grounding wire and connect it to the rebar that runs along your footing. That's a great solution because you've already got the uh, metal rebar in the footing anyway. Why not use it as a grounding rod instead? The electrician never you know, made that happen, brought that to my attention or anything like that. So, um, you know, we were left trying to figure out what to do. Uh, there have been some ideas about le leaving like a mat, uh, like a, a electric dispersal mat that we could connect to in the greenhouse. Uh, and then they were saying, well, you can just use a couple of regular grounding rods. These are eight foot grounding rods. And we were gonna drive them into the greenhouse. Now, uh, the greenhouse has some, uh, you know, soft stuff on top, but then it's like just rock underneath. Uh, and they were, were saying, well, they don't have to go straight down. If they hit something, they kind of bend or whatever, that's fine. And, you know, if it's hidden under the ground, you can't tell the difference anyway. But, and there were just all these different uh, versions of the idea that were just kind of, uh, sounded really uh, laborious. And then it occurred to me, the soil up here, if you guys recall, was all brought in. It's that um, sandy bank run stuff. And it is uh, really, really easy to dig through. And I bet it's gonna be really easy to put these things into. In fact, I bet I'll be able to just push it down for a couple of feet. And I won't even have to use the hammer until it's, well, I don't know. I'm not sure when I'm gonna have to use the, uh, the sledgehammer. So I have the ladder here so I can, you know, uh, climb up the ladder and, and hammer it in, but I think it's going to be pretty easy. So um, I know that the uh, the runs on this camera are only five minutes. Sometimes, very infrequently, I get cut off in the middle of something. I want to highlight this process because I think it might be interesting to watch. So I'm going to cut the video now, and we'll go back to a new take to make sure we don't run out of time. Okay, so I got five more minutes to bore you now, and let's get going. Uh, uh, we need two grounding rods and they need to be eight feet apart. I'm, I chose to put one right here because uh, the electrical panel is kind of here-ish and I didn't want to put it directly behind the electrical panel because the well line comes in kind of around there. So I I'm, I'm wanted to bring it just about as far over as I could so the wire will come up from the panel over to the wall and then come out kind of around this area or so. So I'm going to put the uh, grounding rod right in here and let's see when it stops. Eventually it's going to hit. <laughs> oh, wow. oh wow. That's what you call muscle power. <laughs> okay, obviously I hit maybe a cavity or something down there. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about that. The soil will compact over time. I'm cool with that. I can I put it? No, that's as far as I can push it. Uh, we'll use this to get it the rest of the way. They said just a couple of inches above the ground. I guess I'll do it there and maybe we can tap it in a little bit more later. Now, I, I hope the second one's as easy as that one. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, okay, I, I bet I don't have the best electrical conductivity down there, but I, again, I'm sure that the soil is gonna compact over time. So they said eight feet betwixt the two rods. I don't know if that was at least eight feet or at most eight feet, so I'm just gonna do it eight feet. All right, this water dripping off the edge of the roof is real fun. All right. But at least it's wet. I just, I, I, got, I got a little nervous that I was going to uh, lose the opportunity to put these in the ground if the ground froze. All right, here we go. Are we gonna be as lucky? Oh, so far so good. Oh, I hit something. Oh, wait, no, I'm going through it. Oh boy, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Again, the other the, the initial plan was to have these kind of get jammed underneath the footing and have to fight with it. 
under there. I'm going to get my tape measure out of here so we can get dirty. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was super easy. All right. So I'm glad those are in now. And I, I wanted to put them pretty close to the house so that they're not really, you know, tripping hazards so much. Uh, but I didn't want to put them so close to the house that they would hit the footing when they went down. So I, I kind of uh, put them, I don't know, how far are they? Yeah, six inches away from the house. And I, I tried to kind of, as much as you can, kind of point them away from the house. Although with, you know, eight feet of swing up there, I wasn't able to angle them too, too much. But that's good. That was easy. Wow, that was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. That's it. Thanks for watching.